Xi Jinping behaves abnormally at BRICS summit, his aide intercepted by burly man. Freedom House Report, Labor and Housing Protests Surge in China Bitter days come to China as even state-owned real estate enterprises pay no wage. Tofu Building, three-story steel shed collapses in Zhejiang. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Xi Jinping behaves abnormally at BRICS summit, his aide intercepted by burly man. During the BRICS summit being held in South Africa, one of the media focuses is Chinese leader Xi Jinping whose behavior is a bit abnormal this time. In addition to showing a haggard face on many occasions, she was temporarily absent from the conference to speak. On August 23, a reporter even captured a scene where he was bewildered. Wednesday, August 23, is the second day of the BRICS Leaders Summit and the leaders of various countries entered the venue one by one. It can be seen from videos on social media that Xi Jinping walked alone on the red carpet. When he passed through the gate to enter the arena, he was quickly followed by his entourage with a leather bag behind him. Just as the entourage was about to go through the gate and catch up with Xi Jinping, the aide was forcibly stopped by a burly security guard of the conference, and the gate was closed immediately. At this time, Xi Jinping looked back at the closed gate. Then he continued to move forward for 15 steps and stopped suddenly, looking disoriented. Considering the situation, he hesitated whether to move forward. His expression and movements seemed confused. Finally, he looked back again before advancing to shake hands with the host, South African President Mafosa. According to a netizen who reposted the video, the entourage is Xi Jinping's interpreter. Free Asia Radio, RFA, released a video on Facebook. At the beginning of the video, Xi Jinping came out of the boarding gate and waved to the officials below. However, the footage then showed that, during the talks with the leaders of other countries, Xi Jinping looked tired, blinked constantly, and even seemed to be falling asleep on some occasions. RFA described that when shaking hands and taking photos with the leaders of South Africa, Russia, India, and Brazil, Xi Jinping seemed not to understand the instructions of the host, and his reaction was slower than other leaders. After he unexpectedly failed to show up at the BRICS Business Forum on August 22 in South Africa, his abnormal behaviors have lured attention from international media. The videos have caused heated discussions among netizens. For example, Dash, I have to say, the security is quite professional. Dash, the security guards in South Africa did a great job. Hey, who will translate later? Dash, it's embarrassing. Dash, humorous. There are so many scenes. Dash, whoa. It's overseas revolution. Dash, this situation has never been seen before. Is it an illusion? Why do I feel that Xi Jinping's face has turned black? He even changed his speech to be read by the Minister of Commerce, it is said that the whole group left the meeting and something big happened. According to a report by The Voice of America, she was originally scheduled to attend the business forum of the BRICS summit later on the August 22 and deliver a speech, but unexpectedly did not appear at the venue. Wang Wentao, China's Minister of Commerce read out his speech at the forum instead of Xi Jinping. The Chinese government did not provide an explanation why Xi Jinping did not attend the closing ceremony of the business forum. Hua Chunying, spokesperson of China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, even posted a photo of the meeting venue on Twitter, with a caption saying, President Xi Jinping delivered a speech at the closing ceremony of the BRICS Business Forum in 2023. Brian Hart, a fellow at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, SIZE, a Washington think tank, commented that, this is very strange. He wrote, Hua Chunying said that Xi Jinping delivered a speech, but Xi Jinping was absent from the meeting. Commerce Minister Wang Wentao spoke for him. Please note that this photo was taken from the back, and there is no Xi Jinping in it. Freedom House Report, Labor and Housing Protests Surge in China 
Despite increased censorship and repression from the Chinese government, mass protests over labor and housing issues in China have surged over the past year. According to a new report China Dissent Monitor published by human rights group Freedom House, there were 583 mass protests in China in the second quarter of this year, bringing the total number of protests between June 2022 and June 2023 to 2,803, with a cumulative participation of at least 30,000 people. The report notes that the protests in the second quarter of 2023 were dominated by labor disputes, 59%, and housing disputes, 22%, while the rest concerned education and school safety, ethnic and cultural rights, and religious freedom. In an interview with Radio Free Asia, Lin Xingliang, a Chinese dissident now living in the Netherlands, said that the number of protests recorded in the report is just the tip of the iceberg. He said that the real situation in China is more severe than the above report. Regarding the housing problem, when some people in many counties organized street protests, the government had nipped the incident in the bud. Rising unemployment and a housing crisis have led to a surge in labor and housing protests. The report revealed that labor protests have continued to rise since December 2022, reflecting China's sluggish economic situation. Data shows that there were at least 93 offline labor protests in June alone, 2.35 times higher than the data recorded in June last year. An analysis by China Labor Bulletin also pointed out that most of the recent labor protests have been initiated and participated by workers. Guangdong Province, the hub of China's manufacturing industry, is the hardest hit area, accounting for 35% to 50% of monthly labor protests. Some analysts said that, due to the continuous malaise of China's economy, the rising unemployment rate and the real estate crisis have affected the daily survival of ordinary people. The statistical data show that foreign investment in China fell to its lowest level in 18 years, its sluggish imports and exports and manufacturing also hit the overall economy heavily. Lin Xinliang believes that due to the recent continuous downturn of China's economy and its real estate crisis, China's youth unemployment rate has soared, unfinished buildings can be seen everywhere, and various social problems have been having impacts on people's livelihood. Lin said, employment and housing is about people's livelihood security. They even face problems with housing and life, and they know very well that if they stand up, they will face repression, but they still have to stand up. It can also be said that social contradictions are already very serious, and more similar things will happen in the future. China's National Bureau of Statistics has recently stopped publishing data on youth unemployment in urban areas, after the data climbed to an six-year high of 18.21% in June. Wu Xiaoping, a human rights lawyer in the United States, said that if the Chinese government cannot save the economic decline, various social contradictions will only intensify. He said that many companies and factories cannot pay wages, people have fewer and fewer employment opportunities, and their incomes are decreasing, so the labor conflict is getting worse. In addition, with the current real estate crisis, house buyers now cannot get the unfinished buildings they have bought but they also have to bear mortgage loans. Wu Xiaoping said that, coupled with the rapid decline of the property market caused by the economic downturn, various factors are intertwined, it will lead to more intense social unrest and conflict. In addition, the report notes that censorship remains widespread in China. Freedom House said that it analyzed more than 4,000 Sino Weibo posts and found that 22% of posts expressing dissent were censored. Lin Xinliang said that, despite increasingly strict censorship, there have been more mass protests. Especially with labor and housing issues, China's social contradictions have intensified to the point of irreconcilability. Bitter days come to China as even state-owned real estate enterprises pay no wage. The real estate industry downturn in China has affected the survival and development of some central and state-owned enterprises, and the bitter days may really come. Several days ago, a Shanghai Architectural Design Institute issued a notice, since June 29, all employees have been shut down for three months. The resumption of work requires company notice. The reason is that due to the impact of the general environment, the company's business has dropped significantly and the business is difficult to operate. 
At this stage, there are no new design projects to complete. It is reported that last year the company was also optimistic about the industry recovery after the outbreak and opened new branches in two places. Now it has such an ending. There was such a hot discussion on the internet of China before, and following the post the salary of a construction company stopped, there were a bunch of comments such as, no salary paid for half a year, it only paid insurance and no salary. That does not mention the salary deduction. New employees are also severely beaten, they have not been paid 100% of their wages since they started working, and the companies will not make it up in the future. Layoffs are becoming normal. There has been arrears for several months, and non-staff contractors have been optimized. The construction industry is deteriorating and the house cannot be sold. Even central enterprises and state-owned enterprises now stop paying wages, which is surprising. Nearly 2,001 companies in the field of construction engineering have been notified or punished for wage arrears. Faced with this situation, one cannot help but feel that no matter how big the eaves are, it is better to have an umbrella. Workers with connections to the real estate industry are on the same boat, and they are tied with such a rope. The downturn of the real estate industry has affected too many industries upstream and downstream. Various construction unit engineering payments have been postponed. Real estate practitioners are desperately facing a substantial salary reduction. They may have to go out and start a business. But in this situation, it is very hard to become an entrepreneur. Tofu Building, Three-Story Steel Shed in Zhejiang Collapses A three-story steel shed in Simon Town, Yuyao City, Zhejiang Province suddenly collapsed on August 23, leaving 12 people crushed underneath. The casualties are unknown, and the local authorities have not reported the cause of. According to China's official media, the incident occurred at around 8 a.m. on August 23, when a steel shed owned by Ningbo Yufei Cosmetic Packaging Products Company, at No. 7, Changjin Road, Simon Town, fell down. Witnesses said that it was raining at the time of the incident, and many people took shelter under the shed, and it suddenly collapsed. As of 11 a.m. nine people had been rescued, and three people were still trapped. Among them, two people had been contacted and were conscious, and the other person is still in search and rescue. According to another report, as of 3.30 p.m., all the trapped persons had been found. A video posted by a netizen showed that a large three-story steel shed had completely collapsed. It was raining when the authorities dispatched cranes, firefighters, and ambulances to search and rescue those trapped underneath. Don't forget to comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths. Thank you.